Hello, Mr. Dillman. Thank you for subscribing, man.
88% accuracy. Okay. Sure. First report on the day. I can play 95, but four seconds on the clock. It's not a good time to experiment. 95 advantage white for sure, yeah. to my um and oh, there it is hello mr vlad thank you thanks Not so great, yeah. Not so great. I don't care about being great or not. I, I don't matter. I just want to see some good chess, man. Uh, that's not what I'm doing right now.
That's a lot of pawns. That is a lot of pawns, man. Um, how about Mrs. Ben Elf? It's kind of a weird game, man. Very strange game. Just gave me a lot of pawns. So bishop is six and queen b eight is the right move here. Hmm. Ah, I keep forgetting I need to be here. I need to be here or I will get a zero. Because I don't get the um But I need to stay in this one page, one one tab, one page. I'm not allowed to have double tab open because they lead to different databases and the system is confused and might think I'm not online, whatever. Two out of two. Oh my god. Oh my god. 86 people is two out of two. Holy. I, I am 104. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, okay, man. Sure. Bogdan is one out of two. Wait, where is Naka? It's not like... All right, two out of two, yeah, okay. All right, well... Uh, it's more than... Там чай сделаешь мне? Дай мне чай, чтобы я это проснулся немножко, пожалуйста. Хорошо, с ножками? Угу, спасибо. Yeah, Naka is playing. Um, yeah, Naka is uh, two out of two. Uh, I was looking for him also, and I just saw him somewhere here. He is like somewhere here, because he 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 didn't get the the best. Uh, yeah, here he is, number forty four. You know why? Because he is playing sort of lower position, lower rated position, and the other guys are playing higher level of position. Yeah, so you know his tie breaks right now. It's always like this. Yeah. But once he starts playing all the leaders and, uh, you know, winning, then he starts to get the best tiebreakers. All right. But in the first two rounds, his tiebreaks are not that good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just sort of woke up, so I need to wake up my brain. Unfortunately, I cannot analyze the games, which is terrible, but you know because if i start analyzing the games then the system thinks i'm not online there's some some games in progress yeah ripka 1989 terminator all right Second Indian player for today.
absolutely nothing here. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Should I log in tech? Never mind. is coming there again. This is not good. Absolutely everything to this guy. Another report. Another report. Спасибо, Сушка. Да. Ну, на двух индийских читеров попался, но уже все бесполезно.
was pretty obvious because he was basically playing second, third line moves all the, all the game. strong play
sämst där de var än. This is not good. This is definitely not good.
Yeah, but if I play a five, she just trades and play a four and Bishop on a four is pretty good actually. But this is a mistake, yeah. If I don't play a five, she plays a four anyway. No, it's advantage white. Yeah, it's just bad position. Wait, I didn't play rook b8, what? What? Oh my god. First line moved 97, wow. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. 2000 rated player. He made zero blunders. I made only one blunder, but I blundered the whole bishop. He made zero blunders. This guy is 2000 rated. Dude, do you know what that is? He's gonna lose to 80% of my audience on the channel. That's what that is. Half of you guys would just beat his ass in a classical game. My strength, my strength is depending. And I still play around 2600 level. Hmm. When I get to time trouble, I, 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 I can blunder stuff, yeah. But. But in time trouble, a lot of grandmasters are known to blunder stuff, even the top players. What is surprising that a guy like this, he doesn't blunder. If a 2000 player doesn't blunder with seconds on the clock, 
Now that's 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 a serious problem right there. He has zero blunders in the whole game. He had an accuracy, yes, but blunders? That's the weird part. And that's that's a very suspicious part too. Two thousand players they just blunder a lot. Not this guy. Anyway, um, I just I, I, I know I know what I'm playing, so uh, you know I just report him. I'm not gonna even state the obvious. Uh, Exactly. He, he, he goes into the one of the two categories that I mentioned before that have a great incentive to cheat, actually. There are two major categories of cheaters. The youngsters who have something to prove and the coaches who need to, you know, get attention. These are two categories of people who are most likely to cheat. He kind of fits into both because he is only like 20, 22 or something. With 2000 rating, how many students do you think he will get? Now, he can show everybody that he beats me. He's going to get a lot more, okay? That's what's going to happen. Ah. Uh. How do you play here? Let's go H4 first. Let's see what he wants. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's kind of. Yeah, I'm I'm under effect from the uh, from the previous games, so I have to chill out a little bit. This is not conducive to a good result. So I gotta be careful. So let's just try to play solids. Hope for the run. I'm gonna play very, very solid now. <laughs> but uh, come on, 2,000 rated players, they seriously think that uh, they can get away with stuff like this, but okay. Uh, it's just funny. Um, okay. So my knight on c3 kind of sucks, yeah. Back. 
if I had a change of a mind. Should be a very interesting position actually. I have no idea who is better or not. Might be a win or not, I don't know. Um, maybe I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. It's kind of weird. Um, pretty sure I was winning. King f4, of course. King e4, king e4, b3, king d4 wins. King knight d4s. Yeah, king e4, king e5. Like, what is this? Yeah, I had to play e4. That's. 
probably is winning. Thinking about G5, wasn't sure. Six is coming in. Wow. I have actually no idea how to win this. Um, there are some positions where knight and rook actually have a good chance, but I don't know these positions. Against the computer I might probably lose this, uh, but... Wow. Check. Alright, even here it's like dead draw, yeah? C3 was all weird. Um, pretty weird. Okay. I just need to finish my development, yeah? What am I doing? What am I doing? That's what I'm doing.
Thank God for the good structure. Yeah. Thank God for the good pawn structure. Jesus. The fuck, man. That was a terrible move. The bishop does not belong there. Yeah, bishop is 6, queen d7, rook d8. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Bishop e6, c6, queen d7, rook d8, bishop d6, not f6, d6. Ugh. Like, what is this bishop f6? Like, my god. It's still okay for me, yeah? I still have to play just bishop e6, b6, queen d7. Then I start playing like crap. Bishop f4. Again, bishop e6 is okay. But a4, and suddenly after, I don't know, queen f3, I thought was actually queen a3 is a3, yeah? But okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, I completely missed d4, now white is just winning. I mean, I could take a draw, but uh, pfft, never mind. Jesus, what a, what a terrible game, man. What a terrible game. Dani is tearing a position. No. Yeah, Dani is very similar to Big Fish Eyeball. Alright, I need to get some probably light up, yeah? Be right back. Yeah, yeah, FFL is a uh, yeah, famous fucking loser, yeah, that's what it is, all right, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, sure. And, but the, what is more impressive, we have a fan from China, or actually from Turkey, with five and a half out of six. Now that is very, very impressive. Five and a half out of six for FM in this event? Yeah, you, you know what that means, right? Automatic, uh, automatic suspicious list. Automatic. If you're not a GM and you're five and a half out of six in these events, uh, you can bet anything that you'll be watched very, very closely. Very closely. Sometimes I play like this, it's just to confuse everybody. 
just confuse people because g4 prevents f5 yeah sort of so he now he is a little bit confused because he doesn't know where to play because the whole idea behind 97 is to play e5 f5 but if you don't have f5 what are you gonna do it's a big question it's a really really good question so On the other hand, I also have a question, like, where are my pieces going, man? Like, where my pieces are going? So I have no idea. see how he feels about playing the nine game what do you think what do you think about the nine game here Nitsy beats a spider. Ba -dum, ba -ba -ba -bum. If you want to take on c7, I'll be pretty happy. I'll be pretty happy. Why can I take this? explain
All right. Uh, so that was pretty confusing. Uh, see, G4 is actually quite playable. I mean, G4 is not in the, in the computer's top five, six moves. You know, human brain comes up with a move like G4. But as you can see, valuation is still pretty decent, yeah? I mean, it's pretty close. But the thing is, black cannot play a five, because if you play a five, see the valuation shot up, because it's like King's Indian, yeah? You open the G file, because in the King's Indian, white plays G4 a lot. It's the same, same, same idea. But, okay, I think he played pretty smart, actually. He, he played on the center, he plays knight B6. He doesn't play e4, he just stands, yeah. So I had to play bishop h4 here, actually. Yeah. Queen e6. Yeah, black is fine, yeah. So this is where things get really tricky. Yeah, this way, th yeah, I think bishop d7 and just, you know, being patient is good for black. This is also okay, but but I feel like, you know, this is getting interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. Bishop e5, definitely rook c1. Oh, uh, okay, rook c1 I think is fine. And after this, it's definitely better for white now, yeah. Six. You know, for some reason the computer likes queen f4. I don't know. With the idea of queen h6, maybe, something. Queen a6 is normal, but I want it to be safe. Yeah, g5 immediately, probably better. Oh, rook d5, my god, wow. Rook d5, holy fuck. Ugh. After this, he's okay. So how do I win this? I had to play rook f6 first and then rook f7 for some reason, I have no idea. Apparently he can take on h3 now. Oh, he has rook f3, wow. Uh, Okay, but this is very hard to play at three seconds. Very hard. Uh, I am beating Hikaru, it was funny. Really, how funny was that? Applying this level. This seems completely equal, so what happened? Yeah, but this end game was better better for black, no? Ah, okay, now it's not clear. Why would you, why would you trade your active rook on h, which can go here, here, and okay, that's why he is I am. Okay, that's why he is I am. All right, let's hope I didn't miss my game. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but he is still, he is still, yeah, he is there, yeah, I know. Nobody, because you guys, you understand, if you cheat against Naka, the chances are you're gonna get caught a lot faster than if you cheat against me, okay? It's just the fact. Who cares about uh, 
all Gs are like me, you know. It's way more important, you know, to catch people that play the face of the chess.com. That's is more important. I hate this line. It's like you have no idea. I have no idea who is better here or why. Bishop g4, knight g4. How the fuck do you play here? I'm completely at loss. Maybe rook e8. I, have absolute, I cannot stand this line for both colors. Bishop a6, threat or not? Big question, I have no fucking idea. I don't feel like rookie 7 is playable though. I need a loft anyway. It's kind of loose.
Well, that was a one move blunder. Uh, Kramnik is playing? Really? What? Where? He's got five points? Where? Where is Kromnik playing? Naka, this guy is playing Quran actually. Fabi is winning, of course. Because he's Fabi. I don't see any other Kromnik playing. Where is he? Where, 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 where is Kromnik? All right, by the way, okay, let's see. C5 is okay, yeah. Bishop F4. Oh, Rook B6, yeah, of course, Rook B6. Rook B6, or Rook B7 is fine also. Queen D2, first line, wow. First line. Rook E8, first line. Shit, wow, I played a little first line moves, man. Yeah, but okay, I wasn't sure about this position. Is this. Oh, Queen G4 check, of course, my god. I was thinking about it. I was. Uh, I felt that this was a good, good sack. Yeah, so okay, so I played really well, even though I didn't know how, but I felt that this should be good, but I didn't see if it would be good. All right, so you know, my mind understands the good moves, but even though my brain refuses to see, doesn't see the tactics, but it knows that this is the right place for the piece, okay? This is the problem, yeah? When you don't play competitive chess and you don't train, it's like you, you still, you know, your brain still remembers the pattern, still remembers where the pieces should go. But when you try to, you know, justify it by tactics, it, forget it. But, okay, where is Kramnik? What, what is his nickname? Uh, Vladimir Kramnik? Really? Under his own name, yeah? Oh my god, yeah, you're right. Who did he lose to? Okay, ah, okay, that was different. Oh, that was the plan, right? That was play in or something wait he won one two three four five six he won six in a row what you mean he just forfeited two games and still played really wait why would you want to join the tournament with two two rounds already forfeited Wait, why, 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 what? Wait, where is he? I just saw him, what happened? He just left, yeah? Yeah, he probably left. You know why? Because the problem is like when you forfeit, your tie breaks just goes to shit because uh, you know uh, the tie breaks are based on the number of points your opponents get by playing in the event. When you forfeit, it means you get zero points in all tie breaks for compared, you know, to your to your uh, like people you share a place with, right? Their opponents they will still get like two or three points which is huge compared to your zero points. So that's why it practically makes no sense to be late more than one round. If you're, if you're late one round, yeah, there is, there, is a, there is a good argument you can sort of play Swiss Gambit. But again, your tie breaks, they go to shit completely, right? But, you know, he started like two rounds late and then he went to win six games in a row. That was pretty amazing.
and he quits actually. Um, yeah, I didn't know you could join TT. Um, what could have happened, he joined the DT, but he forgot about it and he came late. Which is, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you come late, like 20 minutes late, you miss two rounds, yeah? So I think that's what happened. He just, he, he, he got late. Um, they hit 10, 10, 10, 10 places, what? He's still there? Oh yeah, he's still here, yeah. But you see his tie breaks, it, it's because of that, he, he missed two games. But I'm pretty sure he wants to beat um, some top guys anyway. But three rounds remaining, uh, if he wins three games, he gets uh, nine points out of 11. That's pretty, that's actually pretty damn good. If he can win last three games, nine out of Wait, eight, 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 I'm sorry. Ah, okay, eight out of 11, yeah, you probably don't get anything. So me and uh, Vladimir are pretty much screwed. Uh, we don't get anything. Uh, the guys who have six and a half and seven points, they actually, of course, they're fighting for the prizes. But, um, uh, so what happened to, with Fabi? He won. Uh, he actually lost to somebody here but he beat the rest of the games. All right. Naka just, he just beat Andraken. Yeah, how does he beat Andraken like this? He beat Andraken with black. Oh, he just played this line and he lost um, in some tournament recently. So Naka knows how to play this now. Yeah, C5. So, so uh, yeah, C5 is still surprising. 97. Wait, Naka is lost. Oh, but Andreikin doesn't see tactics, yeah. See, Naka is lost. He, he, he is, he is lost on time, he is worst on time, and he is worst in position, but he, but Andreikin blunders, okay. And Drake and Blunders. Wait, where is my tournament? Wait, what happened to my event? Wait, I didn't quit the tournament. What 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 the hell? Where is my tournament? No, come on, give it back to me. Uh, wait, where, where is the tournament? It's longer than usual to connect. Okay, I understand. Uh, but where, where is the frigging tournament? Oh my god, did, did, chat, chat, did chat com just crash? Yeah, I know, but I, you, you guys see it. I don't even have the page with the tournaments. Like, what the hell, man? All right. Analysis. See, where's, where's my tournament? I'm playing line. I didn't quit the tournament. What happened? Like, what the hell is going on, man? I got it last time before I refreshed. Please wait, it's taking longer than usual to connect. Should I wait? I am waiting and Come on. Come on. What 
What the hell, man? Is Naka playing? Yeah, he's able to... He, 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 he's got the tournament, but I don't have the tournament, man. Where is my tournament? Oh my god, come on. I'm gonna miss the game, man. I'm gonna get forfeited because of this shit. Alright, finally. Oh my god. I'm playing Danlas, for real. No, what about my game? Oh my god, I'm playing Kramnik. Holy shit. If I play f3, then what? 3d5, take, take. Mm. And then we'll see. This bishop is better, yeah. All right, bishop is six. Good move. Good move. Bishop d6, bishop e4, probably, yes, or d1, probably has to be played.
I'm just going for the draw. Just going for the draw. I mean, see, if he doesn't want to draw, it's fine. But to me, it looks like a fucking dead draw. You got your wish. You guys got your wish. It was London system against Kramnik and it was a draw. Okay. You guys happy? Can you filthy flag Kramnik? Why would I do that? And, you know, we may draw, we basically screwed each other because now we have absolutely zero chance to win anything. All right. Mr. General Director, how are you? Legendary moments, I guess. <laughs> Nothing legendary, but okay, let's, let's see the game. I'm actually pretty curious. So G6. H3 is unnecessary, but okay. Yes, knight c4 is way too early. You should play bishop f3. See, the computer shows it's a little bit better for white, but okay, it's equal. 94 first line, okay. f3. Actually, first line. Oh, yeah, e5. Okay, so maybe e5, yeah. So you see, this is the problem, right? I, I, I missed 94 move, I didn't see it. This is why you need to play bishop f3 first. You're putting the bishop to work and you're denying the square. So knight c4 was hasty. But after this, I, I thought it was okay. Yeah, black is a little bit better. And now I play what? Rook fd1. Yeah, rook fd1 is a good move. It's a very good move because it forces the bishop out of the center. If he takes, then rook b1, rook b7 equal. So he takes here, but you know, you see, you, you understand that black is better, so white has to look for a draw now. That's what I did. I played rook d1 and I forced this bishop out. If the bishop moves, then the bishop is protected and white is just equal. But if he plays like this, then it's just opposite color bishops. All right, simple as that. And just bishop c7, and you, you don't care about this pawn because you want to trade the rooks. If you trade the rooks, just dead draw. So he plays like this, but he missed bishop d8. And now it's just dead equal, okay? I don't know what this f5 was about, but it's still equal. It's just dead equal, okay? So it was a very accurate game. That's all I can say. It's a pretty good game. Pretty happy. I played my pet London system. I got... I misplayed with knight c4 instead of bishop f3. But then, you know, good defense and, uh, you know, draw. Very solid draw. 
But with this solid draw, we're behind. Yeah. Like, look at this. It actually is pretty amazing that both Andrekin, me, and Kramnik, and Kovalenko, and we're at six and a half out of nine. Um, all right, Mr. Dillmans. Gotta can draw a former world champion, but loses to GJ and DFM. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Burrsmith. Yeah, I guess I guess this 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 stream is gonna go on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, how can you not post the game versus the legendary Kramnik? Who doesn't play in these events it's kind of amazing yeah i think this is the first time in a long time that uh, vladimir decided to play in in title tuesday okay i think this is the first time he decided to play and of course we get paired that's a pretty pretty legendary moment man i kind of like that i'm not gonna lie there should be two knight of three okay So it's gonna be the Kingo Indian. A4. A5, I guess. I need to take the spawn. Can I play c5 maybe? What if I play c5 here? Now I have to take it, yeah. Well, he plays very safe. He plays this, yeah. So if I play a5. I always felt that this is better for black because, you know, his knight on p5 was good, but my pawn structure is now pretty excellent. j5, f5, probably not what I want, so let's take with the knight. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna play like Rajabov. Spawn. I'm just gonna trade stuff. Huh. I need to trade this knight so my bishop can go to d4 after d3, okay? That's that's what I need to do. Wow. Really? That's pretty risky actually on his part. It's a risky play, man. Yeah, he takes huge, a huge strategic risk. I guess that's Korbov. That's what he does. The guy likes to take huge risks. Play them. Yeah. 
seven. If I play, can I play d3? Why would I play d3 though? I mean, it's interesting. Pretty interesting. Maybe it's not good, but it's a different story, yeah. And if I switch suddenly to the spawn, what is he gonna do? Sorry, it's a pretty wild game, but uh, I don't know, man, it's kind of weird. Um, I think it was always pretty equal. So 94, you see it's equal, yeah? Black a little bit better. So take, uh, no, but ed4 is correct. Bishop g4, bishop f5 is correct, because he takes, you take with a pawn. Yeah, but he should have taken the bishop, yeah, because after this, Knight c7 because this, you know, once I got this knight, then, you know, a lot of squares got opened. I feel like this was wrong. Okay, 7 looks correct. Yeah, this is definitely equal, okay? Uh, and now we're now like where we're playing something. Yeah, g5 was very, very sharp. Uh, it's also among the top lines yeah because now yeah I, I think he I think he went huge risk by playing this move activating my queen bishop e6 yeah because queen and g5 is like is, is huge um, and I missed something uh, what did I miss I missed queen g6 oh I missed queen g6 yeah hitting the rook and then c pawn moves shit all right I missed that Again, queen g6, yeah. Push b5. Push b5 still okay. So we both miss queen g6 actually, just winning the game. Because uh, if this rook moves, then uh, this is hanging. Yeah, if this, if queen moves, then pawn is moving. Rook b7 is just advantage, yeah. D3, rook B2. <laughs> yeah, but with seconds on the clock, I mean, it's hard. F4, bishop F6, of course. Bishop F4 is just a <laughs> draw. Yeah, this is equal, yeah. This is pretty equal. Yeah, he had to play this, of course. And I play this, and then I play this. 
And of course I play Kovalenko in the last round, yeah. We're not fighting for anything. Seven and a half out of ten. We're only fighting for honor. Yeah. Um You're a troll. What? All right, guys, I, I'm missing a lot of interesting conversation in the chat because I'm actually looking at the frigging game. Uh, but okay, let me play. So let's see what Kovalenko does with London. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I am extremely curious. So... Uh, I get queen e2. It should be rookie one e4 actually, but okay. Because I don't think this is good. But it's okay. It's not the best, but it, it, it will do. Yeah, and the thing is, he is not really threatening to take, I think, yeah? There is this curious anomaly. But, yeah, why not take, fine. Take, take. Mm. All right. Well, he wants to take, so probably we should take. A pawn takes. G3. Kind of weak. And then his knight gets to f4. I don't like that. I don't like his knight getting to f4. I'm not sure why he didn't play rook d8, queen d7, but okay, it's not my place to question why. Centralization. Make sure he doesn't play f5. Now we we'll get some sort of a file. Maybe. Queen d6. Yes, it's possible. Not correct, but you know what? Fuck that.
is not better, so I'm going for a draw. Rook f8 is a threat, but then I play this, rook g8, it's just... Good fight. Um, pretty sure at some point I was better, but like at this point, it's advantage. It's plus one. Yeah. It, it is. It is. It is a very unpleasant position for black. Knight of one, of course, makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Knight of one, knight d three, knight d five. Probably see it's plus one point two. It's much better because knight here is just so restricted. Makes no sense. Yeah. All right. Um, that was the last round. Fabi is getting a lot better in Blitz, guys. He is getting called at practice. He's getting pretty good. Kramnik beats a lot of people. He actually won. Yeah, Kramnik is ahead of me. He, you know what happened? He forfeited the first two games, but in the next nine games, he got eight and a half points. I was the only one who draw, who made a draw against Vladimir. That kind of is, is nice, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I, I stopped his winning streak, but um, he still got eight and a half out of nine. So imagine how he would do if uh, he didn't skip the first two games. Because he, he is very, very close to fighting these guys, yeah? Because just half a point more, nine points, is already, is already third place. So, yeah. I mean, e e e even if I won the last game, it would still be only eight and a half, yeah? So... When I played Vladimir, we needed to win two games both, yeah? Then we would be 9 out of 11, that would have a good chance, but, you know, it's just no way, we, we just made a draw. Alright, so let's see. What are the games? Let's see the games, come on, give, give, give us the games. Um, give us the games. There's nothing. Wait, Fabi wins the tournament actually. What? Oh my god, Fabi actually beat Naka for the first time in. I don't know, maybe not the first time, but it's definitely an achievement. Fabi beats Naka in the Blitz game, my god. Wow. Guys, we're watching history. 
This is the first time I think Fabi beats Naka in a Blitz game. I could be mistaken, but to me it seems like it's the first time. Yeah, but Naka plays a 5... what? I mean, it makes sense, yeah, but still... It's kind of pretty weird. Yeah, a6, yeah. Rook a5. After rook a5, you don't have a6, and black is completely pinned up. Very nice move, rook a5. Very, very nice move. That's what that's what got white advantage because now this pawn on e5 is like permanent weakness. Yeah. Permanent weakness. Not gonna get gobbled up. Ooh, queen h7, bravo. That's how I played against Gelfand. This game reminds me uh, of my game against Gelfand. Uh, we had the same piece um, correlation, yeah? I, had, we, we, I also had the queen, but I was playing black and my queen was on h2. And Boris King was also somewhere on the f file and we had two rooks. Exactly, exactly this, the reverse colors. I was playing black in a classical game against Boris. He survived. I don't know how he survived, but he survived. It was a draw. But f4 is coming sometime. Yeah. Oh. Queen g8. Good defense. Okay. King managed to get out. But then finally, Naka blunders something. Yeah. Yeah, but this looks like a draw. So what happens? Wait, what did he miss? He didn't play king d5. But why is king d5 so good? Why after rook g4, white is almost winning? Wow. Wait, so king d5 was critical, yeah? But after rook g4, it can still lead to the same position. Probably a lot of tactics after rook e5, rook e2 or something, and the computer just sees 50 moves ahead, he can calculate it's like equal, but um, yeah, but wow, g5, you know, it doesn't look right, man. 7. Yeah, because king g4, yeah. Yeah, white managed to keep this e pawn. Oh, he got this pawn also. Yeah, okay. Nice. Well done, Fabi. Well done. He deserves to win the tournament if he beats Snaka. He certainly deserves to win the tournament then. And it's 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 a long yeah, it's it's yeah, okay. Alright. Nice. The tournament is... Wait, Nak could still win the tournaments? Oh my god. Because of the tie breaks. Holy crap. Yeah, I, but I can't believe Kramnik actually got ahead of me. Damn. Um... Uh, Alright, Mr. General Director, thank you so much, sir. Naka wins on tie break. Naka, uh, Fabi beat Naka in St. Louis Blitz and Rapid Showdown match. Really, you know, I mean, I'm talking about online chess because, you know, pre moves and etc., etc., etc. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you guys. You just see when he plays a non GM, it's just good human chess. Yeah. Yeah. Why watching beautiful movies if you're not a director yourself? Interesting question. Uh, Mr. Pefim also, that is correct. That's how I like... That's how I view chess. Playing a game is like painting a picture. Uh, or like dancing, actually, because you need a partner to dance, right? Because, you know, why the greatest games are so great? Because usually they're played against opponents who 
give the best resistance and then you overcome that resistance with the absolutely magnificent chess play. And that's how the greatest games are born. Because, you know, you can't be just great. You need to have a really great opponent who is giving you the best he got and you still beat him, right? That's how the greatest games are played. You need two, two players. Um, you can love chess without playing any game rated tournament. That is also correct. Yeah, I mean, there are so many approaches and there is no incorrect approach to chess. I mean, uh, just, you know. Um, all right, what else did I miss? Neiman made 22 UCF after just two years of tournament chess. Okay. Um... 100% about the results, I, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah, okay. It'll be interesting to see Vichy here, you're not going to see Vichy here. It is very unlikely. I mean, the only, the only way you're going to see Vichy in online chess com event, if, if you give him like a wild card into the, uh, in, into the, direct final uh, top eight tournaments yeah without all the qualifiers i think he actually played some events I, I i wait 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 i could be wrong because i remember i actually vividly recall vishy playing in the chess com events i don't remember what it was but uh he lost on tie breaks or something okay was also it was also very similar to how Kramnik lost to to um, this German kid Vincent yeah remember how Vincent flagged Kramnik so it was very similar I think how Vichy also lost because you know pre moves are the key to online tie breaks uh, okay all right. All right, let's see. What else did I miss? Czech Nepo game is so beautiful. Draw he pulled out. Global Chess Championship? Ah, this could be possible, yeah. Um, what did I miss? General Director, thank you for your support. 25 bucks. Holy shit, man. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Um, no, of course, Visha hasn't hung up his spikes yet. I mean, the guy is, is a legend, yeah? I mean... He still plays a lot of classical events and rapid events, but now he's uh, a vice president of FIDE. He has to juggle, you know, the, the official uh, capacity work with the uh, tournaments. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you invite him, and he still plays extremely great classical chess. Yeah, he is, he is working on the openings all the time, I'm pretty sure. So you're talking about the chess masters today. Let's see. Mm. Right, so we've seen that. So this is today's run, right? All right, so what happens? Um, yeah, this was actually a very interesting game because Aronian is a big specialist of Berlin on the black side, but here he plays with white. And it's actually like, looks like nothing, yeah? Looks like white got nothing, but then Anish is out of his prep. The problem with Anish is that, you know, a lot of the great uh, games he plays, uh, they're all like prepared in advance, right? He analyzes the openings so deeply, he practically analyzes them to the end game. So he knows the middle games and he knows the end games. So Aronian task was to get him out of his prep into something he will have to play. And I feel this is one of those positions which, you know, he didn't really know that well. Because, I mean, f5, man, what is that? I mean, it's still playable, but it's kind of weird. And b4, incredible move. He stops. It's not like he's stopping c5, but he's preparing b5 break. Because black is going to play c6, protect the spawn. So why, and how do you use this? Because when you play f5, you, you weaken your king, okay? King becomes a little bit more open. 
So white needs to open up the position by trading everything on the queen side. Yeah. So his rooks get lines. Okay. That's what is happening. Also, you need to stop c5 because if blacks play c5, then it's very hard to to break the pawn structure. You play c4, he plays d4. You play b4, he plays c4. So that's why you need to play b4 in advance. And then you're sort of ready to play this. The only thing I'm not sure is like, why can't you take this? Um, take, take, check. Probably because you take take on f5 and uh, this is better for white, yeah? Because king is open and this pawn is rolling. All right, so solid play, c3. You guys see the comp says b5, yeah, it's also a case, but c3 is fine. All right, but the c5 is kind of, kind of, kind of weird. This is forced, otherwise d4. And the question is, what is this structure? But this is not good for black because th this is weak. Yeah, you have pawn on a4. This is getting hit. This is weak. This is weak. And king is open. There is no luft. Uh, problems for black. Queen d4. Perfect. King h2. Okay, get the king out. Rise. Rook e3 protecting the pawn. Rook is ready to go to g3. And this. Huh. Yeah, but this doesn't look right. Um, rook b7, rook a3, and this. Yeah. Problems, yeah. King is cut off. It's four rooks, not two rooks. And you also have this pass pawn. Looks like serious problems for black. Um, and this is a critical mistake, yeah? You have to play rook h4 and you cannot give up this pawn. Huh. Interesting. Because after this... Okay. Oh, and the threat is this rook is going here and there is mate, yeah? No defense. No defense. The only move... But Aronian calculated this really well. Nice, rook d6, wow. Rook f7. And again, the threat of the mates, along with, you know, this past pawn, makes the game unplayable for black. Yeah, fantastic performance by Aronian, actually. Fantastic. Uh, that's how you play, okay? Nepo versus Gokish. Wait. Nepo got problems with white? What? Uh, why don't you take the pawn? Yeah. Yeah, usually you just take the pawn and then black has to prove compensation. He has. But b3, what? It's kind of weird. Take. Yeah, there are positions in the Queen's Gambit accepted where white gets a much better version than this. This looks like pretty equal. A5 and bishop b4. Queen e7. What is this 91? I mean, rook d1, rook somewhere looks very logical. 91 doesn't look logical. Knight B Knight B3 the threats. Uh okay. Wow. Yeah, because you don't threaten to take on G7, yeah? Great move. Yeah, Gook is playing really well this part of the game. So take take knight d3, rook c7. If you take on b4, pawn takes and then knight c3. Makes sense. Queen f6, perfect. Yeah. Amazing how Gukish outplayed Nepo with black. Amazing. But okay, Nepo is pretty good in the end games. He and he saves it, yeah. Uh yeah, f5 should be played because you need to prevent e4. 
uh, knight b3, knight goes to d4, okay. Wait, what did I press? Knight c3. This is wrong move. Wait, it's the same thing. Rook a5. Had to play b3 here. See, the computer says black is winning, but you have to be very, very precise. b3, knight a4 wins. Apparently, this is draw. This is wrong. Yeah, it reminds me of some crazy draws I had against Nepo when I played him, like, I don't know, 17, 18, which was a while ago. That was before Nepo became a challenger and, like, you know, and zoomed way past that level. But I remember I played him uh, in the Russian team championships in Sochi in 17, 18, or 19. We had some amazing end games. I, I survived building some unusual theoretical drawn endgames piece down. <laughs> One was I was bishop down, and another game I was knight down. <laughs> and I managed to make a draw. It was like, oh, f4, beautiful. Wow. This is beautiful. Nice draw, yeah. That's pretty much how I survived against Nepo, yeah. There were some amazing end games. Um, all right, great game. Gukish almost had him. And Kaimir beat uh, Nodrebek, yeah. With some opening prep from Leko, probably. Queen b3, first line. My God, I must have missed the last five years of names of development because I don't know this line at all. Like, what the hell is going on? What is this line? What is this position? Why did it just pawn up, yeah? Black has a pair of bishops, but bishop on c3 is very, very strong. And h3, h3, rook g5, yeah, okay. Wait, black is better now. You really don't want to play e5 un un until you're absolutely ready because this bishop and this rook, they're very powerful. Yeah, black is better. Yeah, you, don't, you cannot even play f4. And this this pair of bishops is now murderous. I don't know what happens. Oh, he didn't take on b4. Oh my god. Wow, he didn't take. Okay. He wanted to keep the bishop pair, but he missed b5 and then... Oh, he thought that there's something here. 94. Yeah, he probably only calculated bc6, rook h6, and rook g3, queen h3, m. He probably forgot about 94 completely. After 94, it just pawn down rook g2. Whoa. Yeah, h3. What? Yeah, bishop e4 cutting losses and then taking on h3, taking on c3, but it's probably bad end game. But it's still better than nothing. You know, bishop e5, just queen moves. e6, and then rook g1 counter attack, yeah. There is no bishop h3, but if you trade, trade. You don't even. Okay, he has got three pawns and pair of bishops for the rook. It should not be enough, no, no. And yeah, white forces g6, and then smay threat, yeah. That means white has extra rook and the attack, and bishop d4. Trading one pair of bishops, very important.
Yeah, one of Nodrebek's weaknesses actually is the end game. Yeah, he collapsed completely. All right. That's it, right? Now we're not gonna look at this game. It just looks drawn. All right. Um, yeah, Gukish had the winning advantage. Um, all right, gotta go. Th all right, see you guys. Um, he beat seven and a half minutes against Pankrato 15. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, 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 Pankrato, right. That was something like that. You even remember, wow. <laughs> the details, man. Nice memory. All right, gentlemen, uh, let me get some break, okay? And I will see you guys at the second title Tuesday. Thank you for your support, everybody. Uh, remind me that I'll have to post the video of this TT because historic moment, Vladimir Kramnik plays in title Tuesday. My God, I think it's the first. All right, guys, I'll see you in the second TT.